Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to mass update opportunities using a fun tool called Workbench. It is one of my favorite tools personally to use when I am doing a lot of data work within Salesforce. Sometimes I like to use it in harmony with the data loader, but a lot of the things that you can do with the data loader, you can also do with Workbench. Uh, this is a, a separate tool, so just be aware of that and make sure this is the right tool for you, but I personally really like it. Other things that we have here, so we've got in our tabs, so we've got Salesforce in one tab, we have Workbench in another tab, and we have a spreadsheet that's just ready to go for us, for us to do the changing and manipulation of our data. So let's go ahead and figure out our scenario. So let's go to Opportunities, and let's say I want to change all of Jane Doe's opportunities into my opportunities. Let's say Jane Doe is leaving the company and so we want all of her opportunities to transfer to into my name. And we could also do this for just all open opportunities or closed opportunities. And there's a way to do that within Workbench. I'll show you how, but for this scenario, I am just going to say any opportunities owned by Jane Doe are going to be ours. So one thing that we do need to get is we need to grab Jane Doe's user id and so currently i am on jane doe's user record and so if i go up here into the url you'll be able to see her user id and this is across salesforce whatever record you are on you should be able to see the record id number in the url if it's in lightning it's going to be about 18 digits and if it's in classic it'll be 15 so if you're working in an org that has both classic and has lightning then just be sure that you double check that all right so currently i am now going over to workbench now that we've grabbed that this is workbench so workbench allows you to create a SoCool query so SoCool is salesforce object query language and don't be too intimidated by this this is pretty much the same thing as sql it's very logic driven so let's go ahead and i'm going to do a SoCool query here and select the opportunity object. All right, so currently we are on the opportunity object. We have a few different things. This is very similar to how the reporting is and to how creating list views is with the different sorts and filters that you can use. So I did, I did run a test one earlier today where I grabbed the fields or over here. So I grabbed the ID field, the name field, the owner ID from the opportunity object and then I had a filter that said, if it is is one equals true, then go ahead and pull that. So anything that is, is lost was not pulled. Workbench helps you make a SQL query and run that for your whatever data you're trying to use. I like to use this better than the data loader, which also runs off SQL queries because it is easier to edit and modify a SQL query in workbench than it is to do that in the data loader. It takes a lot of time in the data loader. So I am going to grab the ID here. I am going to grab the name. The owner ID is very important. And then if we want to grab one more, let's go ahead and grab maybe amount, grab more than one field. Um, I'm on a Mac, so I just hit command and then selected the field and then it won't if you hit shift, it will grab a whole line of them. But if you hit command, then it will only grab one of them. All right, and then I am going to also select stage name, just a little bit more information for us. And then instead of an is one filter, I am going to filter down by owner ID where it is equal to, and this is where we, when we grabbed Jane Doe's owner ID, this comes in handy. I am going to go ahead and paste that in there. So now you can see we have the owner ID here. If you also wanted to do it where it was an open stage, you could hit this plus and then filter down results by is one equals false or is closed equals false. That's a better one to do, is closed equals false. And then that would only grab the open records. Yeah, and then it's not too important in this scenario, but if you wanted to, you could sort results by like the name of the opportunity or maybe sort it by the date, those types of things. But I am going to run this query. Should be pretty quick. All right, we've got 28 records currently owned by Jane Doe. 
And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spreadsheet, I'm going to download it, and then I'm going to put it into Google Sheets, update the owner ID in Google Sheets, and then go ahead and insert that. All right, I'm going to grab the bulk CSV, query that. So I changed it to bulk CSV, so now it allows us to download it. All right, now that we have that downloaded, I am going to import. Yes, import. Then we wanted to go to upload, and then I'm going to drag that bulk query in and let it load. I'm going to have it replace, import data, see what we have to work with here. All right, so now it looks pretty similar to how it did when we did that query within Workbench. So now I'm just going to open this up a little bit more so then it looks nicer. <laughs> That's just my preferences. Okay, so now we have amount ID. We need to have the ID. You have to query for the ID or else this won't work. Uh, the ID of the opportunity that is. So then when we go to insert or upload this spreadsheet later on, then it will go to the correct owner. Okay, let's go ahead. And now we're gonna go back into our Salesforce org. I'm gonna go back to opportunities and then find one owned by myself. And then I want to go to my record and grab my ID here. I copied that. And now I'm just going to do this whole spreadsheet. Okay, so I believe... Hmm, okay. Let me double check this. Okay, I end in Q-A-Y and it only went to one of them. So, all right, if I just drag that down. I'm from here going to, I should title this. Updated opportunities. Okay, then I'm going to download it as a CSV. That's really important. Okay, it's down here. Now let's go back to our workbench. Now I'm just gonna go back to workbench, the beginning of it. That's just how I do it. I'm agreeing to this, log in. Okay, and it logged in because I was in another tab. Now I'm going to hit update and then find the opportunity object here. You can look away. <laughs> If scrolling makes you dizzy, I'm going to hit opportunity, then select. Okay, and then we can choose a single record. Or from file, I'm going to choose a file here. Just going to be my latest download. Next. Okay, and then it's going to have us match it. Okay, and these fields look pretty mapped. Okay, and then I'm going to confirm update. Okay, and it is queued, so that means it is working, and now it is completed. 28 records, and it looks like all of them had completed successfully. Now let's go ahead and go back to opportunities just to double check and see if... So these ones over here were previously owned by Jane Doe, and now they are owned by me. If I were to go to my opportunities, it should be at least 28, because that's the number of records. So it looks like there are 32, meaning I had four that were in my name before this. I knew I had at least one, but that makes sense. And that is kind of a, a quick and simple way to get around there not being a mass update tool within Salesforce for you to mass update the opportunities object. Now, you don't just have to do this for the owner ID. I think it's really important that you do know this, how to do this for the owner ID because it's a fairly common issue that people come up with. But there are other things that we can do. You can do this for just about any field that you have within Salesforce. Let's go into an opportunity. So let's say we wanted to update the markets. We could update the markets in the spreadsheet like we did with the owner ID and then update that through Workbench. That would be a, another simple way to do that. Or if we wanted to update stages or make something private. And it's not just for the opportunity object. The workbench works with, I believe, every single object that's within Salesforce. So you would be able to use this with other objects that you are working on moving the data around.
But that is going to be the end of that tutorial. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses on Salesforce certifications down below in the description box or on salesforceupskill.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.